Alright, in this model we're going to use the extruded solid surface flow form that we just made and we're going to replace one of the faces with a boundary surface so that perhaps one of these faces needs a little bit more curvature and isn't meant to be flat like it's cut on a bandsaw. So the first thing I'm going to do is start some planes and put them at important spots along the form that determine it maybe like an important cross section that would be nice to sketch. So this one I'm going to do freehand. I'm not going to insert a sketch picture, but I think you could un pretty easily see how I might draw over a sketch picture if I could insert them on these planes, if I had drawn them by hand and I, I knew something else about them. So I'm going to take, I'm going to cut this object with the cross section tool so I can really see on the inside of it right at the area of my cross section so as I draw my spline I know what I'm really referencing on the form. So the body is, is cut, now I'm going to start a new sketch on this plane, this new plane that I built, plane 3, and I'm just kind of making sure I'm picking the right one, looks like that was really plane 4. I'm going to get normal to it, and now I'm going to start drawing a spline, and that spline is going to represent what I want that, what's now um, sort of um, a flat surface in, in this viewpoint, I want it to have more of an arc. So I'm going to draw that spline and um, I'm going to connect it to the form. Um, the first one had a coincident con relationship, but really what I want to do is make sure that it's a pierce relationship. So I'm going to pierce a point on the spline with the edge of my object. And then once that spline is good, I'll, I'll take off that cross-section tool. Maybe I'll start another sketch on the next cross-section that I've picked. So I'm going to open the object up, look at it from its cross-section so I can really see what that edge looks like. Um, I can relate that cross-section right to a plane so it sits right on that edge. I'll get normal to it. And now I'm going to, in my sketch, I'm going to add another spline. So this should be the spline point that intersects with the corners of the object here. So I'll get normal to it and I'll draw on it. So it looks like that other arc is just kind of floating in space and I'm going to just try and ignore it. I'm going to try to not click on it so I don't get any bad relationships. And again, I'm going to take this point and I'm going to pierce relationship both sides to these edge lines. And I'm kind of fast forwarding through right now, messing with these splines. So the video is moving a little bit fast through just pulling the splines around and making sure they're a nice fair curve. And when I'm done with that sketch, it looks good. And as I'm looking at the form, I think where the form tightens up, and that little skinny section is going to be problematic and I'll probably want to put a cross section there. So I'm going to drag another plane to this tight little spot on the form. Drop it there. That looks good. I'll keep that. Um, I know that I'm going to start a sketch on that plane. So I'll go ahead and get that going. Um, and to see it a little bit easier before I draw it, I'm going to put it back in the section mode up from this heads up display. Um, I feel good about that. So now I can really see what's happening at the form right there. I'm going to get normal to it. Now I'm ready to draw my spline. So I'm laying down four points for the spline so I can overestimate the width of the object and also so I have these points on the spline that I can pierce to the edges of the object. So it's really important that when you're building a boundary surface that the that the cross sections that you build in the two different directions that they touch each other, that they pierce or are coincident so that the computer resolves the surface properly. So now that that spline is set, I'm going to create the boundary surface. So take it out of this cross-sectional mode so I can see the whole object. 
And so now I'm going to use these three lines that I've drawn along with the two edges of the object that are running almost perpendicular to them to create the boundary surface. I'm going to be careful where I select right at the end so you can see the first half of the surface. And then when I pick direction two, I'm picking these two edges. So for a boundary surface, it's important to have cross sections that overlap or intersect at a point. So that's giving me a preview with all the um, curves um, of the new boundary surface. So you should be able to see that it's much more rounded and it's not flat as if it was cut on a bandsaw. So I'm just going to hide some of these other planes so it's a little bit easier to see the object. There you go. You can see the boundary surface I built and it's kind of sitting on top of the previously made solid flow form. So I'm going to replace the face. There's a face on the inside of this um, that I want to get rid of and I want to use this curved surface that I now have. So I've opened up the cross section tool so I can more easily select that interior face. And I'm just looking for a place where it's really easily exposed so that I can select it to delete it and, and put the new boundary surface in its place. So it's hard to see through the yellow, but there's the flat surfaces on the inside and then that curved surface is on the top of it. So I'm going to keep that section view and now it'll be a little bit easier to see that, that there's two surfaces there. I'm going to use the replace surface tool and I'm going to pick the flat surface that we first drew as an extrusion as the face I want to replace. And then I'm going to pick the boundary surface as the face I want to put in its place. And I'm going to say yes. And so now you can see that interior face is gone and I'm just left with the boundary surface. So now I'll trim, get rid of that section tool and I'm going to trim and my first body, my first surface body is going to be my trim tool. And I want to remove these outside selections, but instead of doing a mutual trim, I'm not trying to trim anything below. I'm just trying to trim this top plane. So I'm going to put it in standard and I'll pick the two edges that I want to remove and I'll say yes. And then once I remove that, you can see that I now have this curved bulbous surface on the bottom of the solid flow form. So if I want a more complicated surface than an extrusion, I'll use a boundary surface. 